Hi, my name is Bernie. I plan to give you an overview of my PhD which uses operations research techniques to solve the problem of when to do maintenance of generating units for a national power utility. This research project falls under the supervision of Professor Jan van Vieren at the Department of Industrial Engineering at Stellenbosch University. My path to choosing a supervisor and eventually a topic was not as straightforward as one might think. I am not a pure operations researcher or even industrial engineer from undergrad. I completed my bachelor's in BSc Forestry Wood Product Science in 2010. During this degree I was introduced to operations research in my third year and was immediately intrigued by the discipline, which deals with the application of analytics to help make better decisions. In short, operations research deals with formulating a mathematical model and solving this model to optimal or near-optimal solutions. Following my interest in this field of industrial engineering and operations research, I applied to do a postgraduate diploma in industrial engineering, which led me to do a master's in industrial engineering. My master's was in determining optimal machine settings for wood manufacturers. Towards the end of my master's, I approached Professor Jan van Vieren with the idea of pursuing a PhD. He kindly informed me of the processes and possible topics available. I would encourage you similarly to not be too scared to approach lecturers so as to find out more about the available fields of studies to choose from. I did my master's in a field I did not feel too confident about. I would also really encourage you to as early as possible talk to possible supervisors and their projects or plans available for you to complete your postgraduate studies. Okay, but back to the present. My PhD forms part of a bigger research project at Industrial Engineering. This project tries to determine optimal solutions for different decisions along a national power utility supply chain. An energy flow simulator is used by the power utility, which can simulate the entire country's supply chain. Basically, the processes from primary energy, for example, coal supplies to a power station, to the consumer, for example, a fridge. This is then used by managers to determine what-if scenarios. For example, what if power station A has problems producing enough power? How will this affect the entire country and its supply chain? Our research group at Industrial Engineering adds value to this energy flow simulator by not asking what if, but what should the decisions along the supply chain be. These optimal or near optimal solutions are determined by operations research techniques. For example, linear programming is used to determine what the mixture of energy production should be at each power station to meet the country's demand. The typical objective used here is to minimize the total energy production cost. This and other research areas of expertise falls under another master's student, namely Reino Brits. Another area of interest in this energy flow simulator is determining what the correct policies should be for managing the inventory of coal stockpile levels. Mark Hatton completed his thesis on this. Mark's approach to determining good coal inventory policies was to have three decision variables at each power station. An upper warning limit, target stockpile level and lower warning limit. My project determines what the maintenance schedule should be for all the generating units of a national power utility. This can be seen as a typical scheduling problem where a binary decision variable can be assigned for each generating unit per time period. For example, if a 1 is assigned to generating unit 150 at time period 10, generating unit 150 is scheduled for maintenance then. My solution is to find the best combination of 1s and zeros within set constraints. The best solution is measured according to some objective function. Typically this can be to maximize reliability which means there is enough energy from generating units not being maintained to satisfy expected demand. One way to formulate this is to minimize the sum squared reserve margins over time. This is determined as follows. We subtract available capacity from expected demand. We square this value. The higher this value is, the worse it is. Sum the squared differences across the entire planning period and minimize this value. This in effect tries to create an even band of reserve margins, which is the available capacity over demand across the planning period. Other objectives include to minimize production and maintenance costs, also minimizing the risk of breakdowns. 
Multi-objective optimization deals with solving problems such as these, where more than one objective has to be minimized or maximized simultaneously. Operations research techniques used to solve this generator maintenance scheduling problem include mathematical programming techniques like linear and integer programming for the binary decision variables mentioned. Although integer programming solvers ensure the absolute best solution is found, for the generator maintenance scheduling problem having many generating units, let's say 157, and multiple time periods, let's say 365 days, the problem takes very long to solve, from a couple of hours to days in some cases. In such cases, metaheuristics are typically used. Metaheuristics are high-level heuristics. Heuristics refers to experience-based techniques for problem solving, learning and discovery that find a solution which is not guaranteed to be optimal but good enough for a given set of goals and usually much better than solutions found manually. There are many metaheuristics available and still being created today, such as the genetic algorithm and the particle swarm optimization algorithm to name a few. Let me try to explain metaheuristics. Let's say we have a nonlinear function which we would like to find the maximum of. Remember from school algebra that if we have the function's formulation, we could simply find the maximum or minimum by finding where the first derivative is equal to zero. However, such calculus techniques become difficult and sometimes impossible to implement, especially with complicated formulations. In such cases, metaheuristics can be used. Metaheuristics try to randomly search through the solutions in a smart way. How they decide on where to search depends on the metaheuristics. For example, the genetic algorithm creates solutions based on principles in genetics, like crossover and mutation, whilst the particle swarm optimization algorithm mimics how a swarm of birds will fly to find better positions to settle. In my study, I used one of the first meteoristics developed, called simulated annealing. Again, let's say we are trying to find the maximum value for some nonlinear function. Simulated annealing uses a temperature parameter to vary its search strategy. The higher the temperature, the higher probability of jumping to worse solutions. Thus, the algorithm solutions will jump around a lot more if the temperature is higher. This animation shows simulated annealing trying to find the maximum of some function. As you can see, as the temperature decreases, the algorithm solutions visited jumps around less and eventually tries to settle to a good solution. Of all the values visited, the highest value is chosen. This is essentially how most metaheuristics work, with a trade-off between exploring the solution space, jumping around a lot, or exploiting the solution space, jumping around a spot the algorithm thinks is good. Back to the problem of scheduling generating units. I use simulated annealing to produce varying solutions. The algorithm varies schedules over time. These schedules change the energy available capacity, which is used in the objective function to be minimized, which is the sum of squared reserves as mentioned earlier. The temperature decreases at a set rate in this example, but can be varied over time. The goal of the energy flow simulator is to be used by managers of a national power utility. Thus a decision support software is needed which managers or decision makers can use to change certain conditions and view the results. Let's say we want to solve the GMS problem with simulated annealing for 10 iterations. Note in real life we will probably have to run the algorithm for a couple of thousand iterations to get good results. The bar at the top shows the progress of the algorithm. The best results found can be viewed such as the best schedule's capacity available to meet demand, the actual schedule, how the objective function decreased over time, and related values. Most of my time is spent behind a computer, but I must admit in a very comfortable and professional environment with state-of-the-art computers, 
where fellow students work and share their progress and ideas and get meaningful feedback and questions. We also continually meet on social levels and discuss a range of topics including philosophy, history, music and other art forms. Finally, I would not be where I am today without attending and being a proud member of the Operations Research Society of South Africa, which is a non-profit organization with the mission of furthering the interests of those engaged in operations research activities. I have had the privilege of presenting and socializing with members from across industry and academics at beautiful places around South Africa for many years and will continue to do so. I hope this video has given you some insight into my research and the life of postgraduate studies. Thank you.